ESP. Today is Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. It is a period 6 to 10 day. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, boys and girls, yesterday was an awesome day. If you recall, it was International Women's Day. So girl power. I hope you took the opportunity to tell the women in your life how much they matter. Today is actually a day that I think is pretty cool. It's National Get Over It Day. And the day means exactly that. It means that sometimes we need to get over the small things, like spilled milk or traffic. So even news like that you had an argument or disagreement with a loved one or best friend, it's today is a day that you can kind of put those things behind you and kind of get over it and start over again. Even if, let's see, the marking period will be ending in a few weeks, so Maybe if last marking period you didn't do so well, maybe now is an opportunity for you to get over it and really begin to think about what you can do to move forward in a positive light. And talk to your teachers, talk to your parents, uh, and, and really see what you can do to get over it and move on to positive, more positive light and do better for next marking period. But for now, let's get into bluish again. I know yesterday you heard Mrs. Stratton and they were read to you and they were talking, bluish and her friends were talking about uh, learning about the different holidays, Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah. They even got to play, they actually learned how to play the dreidel game. So that was pretty exciting. I know my kids have learned to play the dreidel game. So let's see what Dreamy and Bluish and the rest of her friends have in store today. Oh, one second. I need to put on the specs. Here we go. It was Friday afternoon and Bluish had gone to the doctor. They became more worried about her each time she went. Students stood around looking at Miss Baker. Like Dreeny, they didn't know exactly how they were feeling. It upset them when Bluish got sick. Each time she left suddenly for the doctor, they feared she wouldn't come back. Hmm, I can't imagine how that must be feel to have a friend that you're worried about like that. Miss Baker could tell and began talking to them. Natalie's mom doesn't want you to feel sorry for Natalie, Miss Baker told them. She wants you to understand that Natalie's been very sick. It was like Dreeny thought to say, I want to know more. Kids said, we want to know more. Miss Baker frowned, pressing her lips firmly together. She went to the blackboard. Natalie has all, she said, writing it on the board which is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It's a serious and painful disease. Kids left their seats. Slowly, they came up to the front. Miss Baker was the lamplight they were drawn to like moths. Hearing her talk about bluish made them stop and think about this worry they'd been having, and now they could show it. They could let it out. Miss Baker put her chalk down and reached out to them. Dreeny took her hand a moment. Tully had Miss Baker by the arm. Other students did the same. When Dreeny and Tully let go, milling around Miss Baker, they all watched her expression. They knew every line of her face, knew every smile and stern reproach. 
Natalie still must take med medicines, Miss Baker went on. But once she's gone through the program, she has an 85 to 90 percent chance of being cured. Wow, that's pretty good odds. So please, her mother asked that you treat her the way you would want to be treated. And try not to feel sorry for her. Class, Miss Baker added, I want you to know I'm proud of you. The way you've come to regard Natalie. But, Drini began, but what does that mean? 85 to 90 percent. Where's the rest? That's not 100 percent. Miss Baker spoke clearly, yet quietly. It means that if Natalie goes from the start of her treatment through five years without a relapse, she's probably forever cured. They stared at Miss Baker. Five whole years? Jamal said, wow, that's, that's long. We'll be 15. What's a relapse? Dasan wanted to know. A relapse is a restart of an illness that's been in remission, that's been halted. Miss Baker took up the chalk and wrote relapse and remission. Their questions came one after the other. But when did, did it start? Drini asked. Miss Baker never answered her directly. She looked around at all of them. Sit down, class, she told them. We'll talk about it. They sat down, but soon they were up out of their seats again. Miss Baker was used to them. They needed to talk, get close, wonder why, listening, and come back to the front again. One student, Linda, was the first to comment. I feel bad, but I feel funny. I don't know. I, I guess I can't help it. I feel sorry for her. Drini sat and squirmed, all of them, talking about Bluish. Was it talking behind her back? Is it like us against her? Us together and her by herself? But she's the sick one, and we're not. Drini had the worst feeling of being afraid of what she didn't know. Yes, I do. Of me getting sick, she thought. Her stomach flopped a moment. Class, Miss Baker said, does it make you uncomfortable to talk about it? Yes, several students piped up. Yeah, it does. One said, I get scared, I'll catch it. I know you can't. Can you? No, don't worry, Miss Baker said. You don't know how to act about it. A boy, Nicholas said. Jamal said, you think she's going to be just like us? Only... You do something, plain, not to hurt her. Her mouth turns down. She gets all sad and can get mean, man. Shoot, I stay away from her. It seems to me you all are learning about a student who is your classmate and who has been very ill, Miss Baker said. What else have you learned? Well, Bluish doesn't like fooling around play. That's for sure, Paula said. Tuli said, she told me once she didn't want to get bruised when kids got rowdy. A bruise is blood is bloodletting. I used to bleed and bleed, she said. I kid you none. It's what she told us, didn't she, Dreamy? Dreamy nodded. It was true, and Bluish had told Dreamy even more. Miss Baker said, To Lithia, Natalie was telling you that when the illness started, she didn't have tiny blood platelets. And we all have to have them. Platelets plug the blood vessels and stop the bleeding. It must have been scary to bleed and not stop. Dasan raised his hand. What stopped it then? She don't bleed now. Blood transfusions, Miss Baker said. Medicines that worked. Tentatively, Drini raised her hand. They all felt she was the one closest to bluish. Miss Baker, all of them waited. Drini sighed and finally said, chemo is like dying. That's what Blue, I mean, Natalie told me. She said what made her faint was this needle they put in her back into her hip bone. She said it was a long, hollow needle that drew out the bone marrow. Ew, kids murmured. Yuckies. Class, Miss Baker said, shushing them. Bluish had told Drini things in its in bits and pieces, and not all at one time. Drini remembered, though, doing their work, talking low, and then, 
That's what the cure is about, Miss Baker said. It's about having no sick cells inside her bones. In the marrow. She wrote on the board, marrow, site of blood cell reproduction. Drini nodded. She said they often have to stick the needle way in and draw out bone marrow to look at it and check it. It was like bluish was in her head. She could hear her. That's what kills you. It hurts so bad. It sucks, man. Like sucking out on a straw. It sucks your insides out. It sucks out your light. Drini didn't feel she should tell them. It was something just so deep of bluish. What she did tell them was... She says she didn't want us talking about her illness. And here we are. Drini looked down at her hands. I can understand her not wanting that, Miss Baker said. I'll take the blame. I hoped you all would learn to respect what it means to be well, to be healthy, the way you are, so that you will see more clearly what Natalie must go through. She erased everything on the board. I got a sore throat, Manny the K said. Oh, Manny, Miss Baker said. Am I going to die? Miss Baker looked per perturbed. That means annoyed. Stop it now, she told him sternly. I'll send you to the nurse if your throat is really bad. It's okay, he said, alarmed, looking ashamed of himself. Kid snickered. Mr. Baker said that was enough and to get back to work. Friday evening, after Tully left, after Drini's mom and dad were home, she called Bluish. She remembered to say Bluish's name properly. Bluish's mom answered the ring. Is Natalie there? It's Drini from school. Hi, Drini. Wait a minute. Drini held her breath. She tried to tell if Mrs. Winburn was upset with her, but she couldn't tell. Why would she be? Drini thought, don't make up stuff. Bluish got on the phone. Hi, she said. You sound okay, Drini said. Why shouldn't I, she answered. Well, you weren't in school. I had the doctors. Yeah, I know. Miss Baker told us. Instantly, she was sorry she'd mentioned it. There was a pause. You all were talking about me, Bluish said. We were worried, Drini said. Miss Baker told us so we wouldn't worry. You worried about me? I mean, all of you? Yeah, sure, Drini said. Silence on the other end. I'm okay, Bluish said finally. There was a tremble in her voice. They talked more. Drini told her ordinary things that happened in school and told her that her dad and Willie had found out about a fun thing at this middle school not far from Bethany. It was an African market. I mean, a whole market they'll have. It's two days after Christmas. You want to go? Tully's going with me and my dad. She doesn't have anyone to go with. Willie's going with some friends. Well, Bluish said, maybe. My dad usually has to drive when I go someplace like that. I can't, like, I can't walk like anybody. I know, Drini said. It's after Christmas on the 27th. I'll have to ask, Bluish said. Are you coming to school Monday? Remember the field trip. I know. I didn't forget. What do you think? They talked a while. Then Bluish said, thanks for calling. See ya, Drini said. She wanted to go over to see how Bluish was doing over the weekend. Maybe Bluish wouldn't feel good, though, and wouldn't want to see her. She'd say so. You can't come over. So Drini hung up the phone without asking. Over the weekend, Drini visited Tully. Well, Tully came and got her. Drini's mom sounded cautious with them, telling Drini, Now, I want you to stay in Tully's house. You hear, Drini? I don't want you walking to the grocery or to the pharmacy. It's Sunday. Everybody's home from work, out and around. Uh-huh, missus, Tully said. Too cold. Nobody's standing out or sitting playing chess and dominoes in this weather. There's more reason to stay inside, Drini's mom said. Empty streets, Drini sighed. The streets were never empty, but she knew why her mom was fearful about Tully's neighborhood. It wasn't so bad. Besides, Tully was her friend. Drini guessed she really was. And sometimes you had to go visit whatever kind of friend you had at her house. Hmm. Wow. So, lots to think about. I'm wondering 
is Bluish going to make it to the field trip on Monday? And what are Dreamy and Tooley going to get into when they get to Tooley's house? I hope that they pay attention and listen to her mother when she said to just stay in the house. So we'll have to see. Well, CCSP, have a terrific Tuesday. And remember, be kind always.